When I was born, I was born into a well-to-do family. Uh, I remember that we had a garden that was big enough for us to throw a boomerang. And before I could, I was old enough to go to school, my family lost everything in business. We didn't really grow up feeling extremely poor, but I remember that we had limited choices. If we had fish today, we wouldn't have meat for the next few days. And if I had a new toy this week, I wouldn't see another toy, another new toy for the next few weeks. It gave me a profound respect for choices, and this is the cornerstone of the project that we are doing right now. It's called The Poverty Line, and it's a visual project between an economist, Lin Hui Yi, and I, and it tries to explore a question, what does it mean to be poor? We try to visualize that and try to keep it simple. And so we try to use it one frame, one day, one person. We started the case study back in two, December 2010, and we started this in China. And we found that the poverty line is calculated to be 3.28 yuan, or 49 cents US, a day, a person. We use the same methodology across all developing nations because we realize most developing countries use an absolute poverty line, which is the minimum to sustain a person, including food calories per day. With 3.28 yuan, we went to the local markets, and this is what we could find per picture per day. Six mantos, a bunch of vegetables, a chicken breast, and three bananas. Initially, when we released this um, information on the web, the reaction that we got was actually quite tremendous, and we got comments from all over. One day, I went to my website, and I realized there were 7,000 hits in a single day. And I found that most of the hits actually came from Russia. I followed the forums and the blogs that spoke about the poverty line, and all the comments were in Russian. So being very curious, I Google translated a lot of these comments. And what I found is a lot of them were actually saying how fresh the vegetables look, how great the bread look. And they even commented, if only you come to Russia, look at our choices if we were poor. <laughs> we found the response to be incredibly interesting. Over New Year's, I was doing the poverty line in India, and I came to know a friend. He's a housekeeper of the house. His name is Arjun. When he found out what I was doing about the poverty line, his first question was, how do the poor live in Switzerland? We find that a lot of people use a frame of reference in understanding people's situations, using their own background, their own worldview, to understand how well it's like for them. This is the Switzerland poverty line. At 7.97 Swiss francs, this is what we could find. We use the same methodology across developed nations, and we find that most developed countries use a relative poverty line, which is a ratio of the national median income. And from that amount, we take the percentage that is used to purchase food. And for the same amount of money, this is the salad you get in Switzerland, and two beef sticks. We photograph them in a consistent way, and actually photograph just about them against the local newspapers of the day. So having been through 15 countries across six continents over the last 15 months, what have we learned? We learned that being poor, or rather being at the poverty line, choices are extremely limited. It is actually very, very difficult to survive at that level. I was just in Brazil this week, and the poverty line is defined as 2.33 hiaos a person a day, when a bus ride on a public bus is 2.6 hiaos. It does tell you how limited choices can be. When we did the project in Madagascar, at 1,284 eriari, which is 64 cents US, we had a fixer who went down to the markets with us to buy the foodstuff. He actually found it very difficult to buy the products because most of the sellers wouldn't sell him for this little amount of money. And considering 
that more than 75% of Madagascan's population falls below the poverty line. At the same time, we also find that um, people would find it interesting to have a comparison of choices of food groups across different countries. This is the representation of carbohydrates across developing countries. This is snacks, tidbits across developed countries. And what we also found is the poverty line is a changing constant. In China's case, for example, since 1978, the poverty line has been readjusted 20 times. And we have documented what has happened over the past two years. We find that in December 2010, it has since almost doubled to 6.3 yuan in um, April 2012. Um, so even though there is a doubling of the poverty line, you don't really see doubling in the quantities of food that's available, mostly due to inflation. So we find that having been through all these countries and covered this, we find that to an extent, we have started a starting conversation for what it means to be poor. And hopefully this body of work will generate more conversation and more debate among people surrounding the contextualization of poverty. Thank you very much.